Today we are doing my simple everyday makeup look, especially helpful if you're a winter or a cool tone girly. But perhaps more importantly, we are talking about my journey into becoming a content creator for essentially the last 10 years, what I've learned in that process, what it means to believe in yourself, to go after your dreams, and to actually do the work to make those dreams a reality. So if that sounds interesting at all to you, stick around. Starting with the Hourglass Veil Primer, I've tried so many primers and this this is just the one that I continue to come back to. Keeps my makeup on. I love it. This is actually eyelash glue. My eyebrows are so stick straight. I've tried the Refi. I've tried the Anastasia Brow Wiz. I've tried Benefit. The got to be glued, but I feel like it leaves my eyebrows a little too goopy, so I find that using a lash glue is really helpful. Yeah, that's my little hack to those bushy, pushed up eyebrows. Essentially, my entire life, I've wanted to be seen. Some of my earliest memories are me waking up really early early in the morning to watch Looney Tunes. So I must have been really young. Went to the kitchen and I got all of the kitchen utensils. It was mostly just a bunch of spatulas. You know, it was in the 90s, so it was one of those TVs that had a plastic screen on it. And I remember trying to jump into the TV because I thought that that would help me be on TV. My mom always tells this story about when I was younger, singing The Sun Will Come Out from Annie on the top of the toilet. I was always singing, always performing. I think it's just something that's been deeply embedded into my DNA since I was young. This is the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Shaping Stick. I just got this. It might be a little too light for my skin, but sidebar note, I recently got my colors done and found out that I'm a winter. I've heard that your contour should be cool toned anyways, but everything that I was using in my makeup routine previously was warm toned. So when I went to Sephora and I asked the Sephora employee what their favorite cool toned bronzer was, they pointed me to this one. And then what I used to sort of set it is this Makeup Forever Artist Sculpt in the color S430 Marvelous Peanut. I wanted to perform my whole life. I was always auditioning for talent shows, making up little dances with my friends. It's just something that's always been deeply ingrained in me to the point that when I see people people on stage or when I see people have their moment, even something as maybe cheesy as seeing them get a deal on Shark Tank, I cry. It's this ineffable feeling of just seeing people realize their dreams that's always been really special. I'm using this Refi double-ended brush to smooth out my contour. We had one dingy modeling agency in Omaha, Nebraska, at least to my knowledge, and I begged my mom to be a part of it, and of course she was supportive. I was in commercials and I did musicals and plays when I was younger. I just loved performing. Another thing I've been really into is color correcting, so I got this e.l.f color corrector in the peach shade. I have it in the green shade too. The peach is apparently good for brightening darker complexions or like medium toned complexions. So I use it a lot under my eyes. The green is supposed to be great for canceling out redness, but because I feel I am on this journey to balancing my hormones, I have a lot of acne scarring, some active breakout. For whatever reason, just the darkness of the scarring, the peach works on me too. So I've been using that just as an all over color corrector. When I was 15, I auditioned for American Idol in Colorado. And I remember thinking that this was going to be my breakout moment. I thought this is going to be the thing that changes the course of my life. Up until that point, I had been singing. My stepdad's friend had a studio. So I would like write my own songs and go into the studio, would practice my autograph. I really thought that I was going to be famous one day. Obviously there weren't any auditions in Omaha, Nebraska, a little bit of limited pickings there. So my family flew, I can't remember if we flew or if we drove, but all the way out to Denver, Colorado so I could audition. My boyfriend, who's now my husband, came. If you've never auditioned for American Idol, it's a really long process. It's a lot of waiting in lines. They have you basically in an entire arena. I'm sure there are some logistics to it now that I wasn't aware of then. And maybe I'm totally wrong about this, but it seems like some people have agents. They get past sort of the initial search a lot quicker. It was eventually my time to sing. I sang The Climb by Miley Cyrus. <laughs> which feels symbolic now for a plethora of reasons. I forgot to say, this is the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful 
Skin Radiant Concealer. I actually just got this as well and really like it. For just every day, I like a little bit more natural coverage. So I'm just using that under my eyes and then blending it into the places again that I have a little bit of acne or scarring or just need a little bit more coverage. It's my turn to sing. I may be seeing 10 seconds of it. There is a table with three judges and they say it's a no. Devastation hit me. I remember leaving the arena in tears and just feeling so embarrassed that I had to go back to my family and say that it was a no. Crushing, as you can imagine. I didn't realize it at the time, but I think that that almost completely, if not changed the course of my life direction at that time. It very much so had an impression that guided me on a different path. I felt a little bit untethered in the world. I felt like I lost my center. And so from that point forward, I was constantly seeking affirmation and validation in the outside world. I looked for it in words of affirmation from others, in being the best at something. So if I was the best at something, I thought in my head, maybe this is the thing that I'm supposed to do. Maybe this will lead me to my special moment where everything clicks into place. It was really the start of me getting very perceptive and very nuanced at being A, what other people wanted me to be, but also scanning the situations for anything that would cause me immense embarrassment, that I wouldn't be perceived as the best or as shiny or as sparkly. Chasing that sort of dragon's tail will always send you back into a cycle of searching because that's just not sustainable. I've been loving Cool Tone Blush and I got a couple of Patrick Ta Cool Tone Blushes. Another blush that I got, which isn't necessarily Necessarily the most cool tone but it's just the most beautiful pink is this cool fee what is this called Mendy moment blush in the shade pinky promise and I just picked this up on a whim at Sephora one day because I thought it was so pretty I looked at the cool fee website for other products and they have so many beautiful things they had another one of these blushes that was like a purple lilac that I think I want to pick up too this sort of searching for my thing the key that was going going to unlock my potential and my dream moment sort of became my true north. I got into a really great college and I poured all of my energy into being the best in my graphic design school, being nice to everyone. That was really important to me, giving nobody an excuse to be upset at me, be mad at me, to embarrass me. I, I just became sort of like a puppet. And that's not to say that there weren't some really beautiful moments in this period of searching and that I didn't accomplish a lot of really beautiful things as a result of trying it this way. I don't regret anything of my past, but I will definitely say that it informed a lot of how I acted. And I am curious about how things might have been different had I come from a place of innate knowing my worth and and having that confidence. But you know, everybody's story is different. What I like to do now is to set my under eyes and then bake my under eyes. So I've just been using this little Charlotte Tilbury powder in the shade medium. It's almost gone, you can see I've hit pan on that. I find that that just puts down like a layer before you go in with intense baking powder and it just makes it look a little bit nicer in the end. Then I'm going in with the Laura Mercier translucent powder. And I just tap that on the back of my hand before I set. The effort I exerted and the will that I had during this time to just be good at something, to show that I was worthy was so strong and I didn't realize that I was doing it to this degree, honestly, until a few years ago. This sort of patterning continued after college. I went into other jobs and various roles that had glimpses of what I thought my dreams could look like. I thought, oh, maybe I can fit this triangle peg into this square hole. It fits, but there's still gaps. But my will at that time was so strong that I was really trying to force something that just in the end wasn't for me. I think it's a beautiful thing to have these experiences because at the end of the day, I wouldn't be the person I am today without those experiences. But like I said, I wonder what would be different if I had come from this place of just full love for myself and full belief that I was worthy enough without having to do anything to earn my spot or earn attention or earn the title of doing something cool. Throughout all of that time, I had made 
numerous attempts to try to have my moment. That is one thing that I can say about this entire content creation journey is that it was not without effort. I did blogs, I did photography, I tried making my Instagram monetizable time and time again. Worked for other people. I started YouTube videos, I stopped YouTube videos. I was constantly trying to make content creation my reality. What I recognize now only in hindsight, I was changing Facing my idea of what I thought the world wanted to see in a content creator, what I saw people being praised and honored and getting recognition for, being beautiful enough, being interesting enough, being articulate and well-spoken, having the perfect aesthetic, all of these things that I was chasing. Yes, I think sometimes people get really good and really nuanced at doing those things correctly and there's a certain amount of luck to that. But also, a lot of times people are just doing things that feel authentically them. That is that ineffable, intangible something that we can't quite put our finger on. So even if we manufactured the same setup and did things the exact same way, it wouldn't hit quite the same because that authenticity piece was lacking. And that was something I didn't really understand. It always made me feel like I was a failure when I couldn't achieve these really high ideals that I had set for myself, these really high standards based on my idea my fantasy of what a content creator was now that I look back I think to myself of course everything fell short of course it never really hit and yeah I had little successes along the way 9,000 followers is not a small I mean you think about 9,000 people it's not small when you think about it in relative terms it wasn't the magnitude with which I felt I was capable of Ever. And it makes a lot of sense to me now because I wasn't coming from that place of full worthiness in myself and my abilities and what I bring to the world. My job here isn't to be the best brightest, most beautiful, most poised, most intelligent, most eloquent content creator. My job here is to learn to love myself so much, so unwaveringly that I find my worthiness in that love for myself, in that unshakable belief that I belong, that what I bring to the table is valuable, that I am enough all on my own without having to do anything. And the more that I can love myself from that place, the more that I can nurture myself from that place, approach my creativity from that place, create content from that place, show up as a wife from that place, the more I will shine. I was trying so hard to control the narrative of how everyone else saw me. It is a Herculean feat because you can never control everybody's perception of you. It's just unrealistic, but you know what we do have control over? How we feel, how we approach the situation, how much love and all of these things that we're craving, whether it's belonging, whether it's attention, how much of that we can give ourselves and our own needs. That's what we have control of. So I feel like one of my biggest lessons throughout this life has to do with perseverance. It's getting back up and getting back on the horse even when it feels like I failed a million times or even when it feels like the whole world is telling me that I have to tear everything that I've built before down and start from scratch. I'm using this ColourPop palette. This is the Stone Cold Fox palette. It's basically all cool tones, which when I first got this, I was like, what the hell am I gonna do with that? I've been learning to appreciate and love it. I'm actually gonna go in with this color right here called Gravity Hill. It's like a pinky, cool toned color, and I'm going to use that all over the lid. Again, we're doing simplified makeup routines. It's nothing too complex. In 2022, towards the end of it, I had basically been running my own design business, yet another venture that I saw proof of the pudding in and thought maybe my trajectory was to be an entrepreneur all along. Quickly found out that it wasn't. Not to say that we didn't do beautiful things and 
create beautiful work. I'm really proud of the relationships we've forged and the network that we've created. And everybody who was a part of TGC is so special to me. But towards the end of that, I quickly realized like I'm doing this in this codependent need to feel validated in the fact that like this is what I can do to make money and to have livelihood even though again there was so much missing. I decided to restructure my business. I won't get into the, the logistics of it. The restructure basically allowed me to step away, not have to focus so intensely on the client needs and services and really direct a lot of that attention back towards me what it was that was calling on my heart, what my dreams actually looked like, and having the courage and the confidence to look them directly in the eye and say, you, you are what I want, and I am no longer afraid to admit that to people, to go after that, to look stupid trying, I'm gonna do this. And so 2023, I had all this time, me and my husband, we met with our financial advisor so that we could restructure our budgets and figure out, okay, Tiana's not bringing in nearly as much money as she was, how are we gonna float this? How are we gonna do this? So that I could basically have as much space and time as I needed to create, to go after my dreams. And the thought was that like, this is my moment. I'm gonna create all this content and I'm gonna be a content creator. Well, I fell into sort of the same trap as soon as I started putting myself out there on the internet. And mind you, I was really trying to be perfect still, make all of my content perfect, make it look on the same level as my friends' content. I have tons of friends who are very, successful creators who have been making YouTube videos and Instagram posts and TikToks for years. And I was chasing their ideal of where they were at and comparing it to mine. And the second that I didn't see the numbers or the likes or the feedback that I wanted, I got super discouraged. When I guess I just didn't realize this until the very end after doing a bit of a reflection, but what I thought was going to be my year of content creation and brazen putting myself out there and doing it became a year of dissolving all of this old patterning that I had relied on up until that point and all of the identities that I anchored myself in before. All of the things that I wore as armor that made me feel strong. Somebody who's poised, selfless, that was a big one for me. I was really afraid to be selfish and take up space. I wanted to be polite to everyone. I wanted to be a good friend. And these struggles popped up for me in numerous ways across the year. I call 2023 my year of dissolution because I really had to take all of those things that felt so firm and dissolve them. I needed to wash away everything that came before. What was left after that was almost this baby. If you can think about it that way, you guys are gonna be like this girl. You think about the essence, the core of you. You would never scoff at a baby. You would never tell a baby they weren't interesting enough, beautiful enough, or cool enough. You would treat that baby with such tenderness and love and care, and you would give that baby such encouragement to say you can do and be whatever you wanna be. I needed to have that moment of thrashing and kicking in the unknown to clear away all of the things that I was clinging so tightly to for fear of what it meant about me if I let go. So yeah, it wasn't an easy year. When I went into 2024, because of all the work that came previously, I was like, I see so clearly the trajectory and where it is I wanna go. For example, I think a previous version of me one of her goals might have been, I want to be a successful content creator. Me now, with this newfound belief of self, said, no, I already am a successful content creator. My goal this year is to monetize my content because one of the things that I wanna to work towards is creating a livelihood. And not just, I'm gonna settle for anything livelihood, an abundant, lucrative livelihood. Laser focus, crystal clear. Honestly, I felt like I was sort of done like i'd like reached the pinnacle and like oh here we are we're focused content creation here we go another thing that i learned with getting my colors done is that winters look best in black so black mascara black eyeliner i never wore black eyeliner before but now i like to use this to tight line my upper waterline and a little bit of my inner corner this is the tattoo studio smoky gel pencil by maybelline and i will say it's good but it does run a little bit so it's not the best i really do believe that 
we are dynamic human beings made of the same stuff that God is made of. We have the capacity for anything within us. Good, bad, ugly, beautiful. Our job isn't to reach some idea of what we think is good or beautiful or true or worthy. Our work is to continuously be present with ourselves, give ourselves what we need, come back to ourselves during the ebbs and the flows, the highs and the lows of what it means to be a human being. This is the ColourPop gel liner, which I love, and it's a cream gel liner, and I'm gonna use this on my waterline on the bottom just to brighten my eyes a little bit. At the start of this year, I was like, oh great, I'm in this position, I have all of this power, I'm feeling really good. My hindrance at that point was, okay, I'm gonna reemerge onto the scene, I'm gonna go for it, I'm gonna put my content out there, and I was really thinking through what was the best way to reemerge into the internet, basically. I wanted to do this reintroduction. I kept journaling so that I could have the like best idea. And little did I know I was continuing to fall back into that trap of everything needs to be perfect, even though I had all of this newfound confidence. So finally, my husband, he basically came into my office and was like, you're making a video today. I fought him the whole time. I was like, no, I'm not ready. What are you talking about? Quit pressuring me. He was like, I don't care what you create, you're creating something today. I think he knew that like, if I didn't have this push, I would think myself into spiral among spiral and never do the thing that I so clearly wanted and needed to do. Pouting the whole time, I made this video. I wrote the script. I recorded this beautiful voiceover, combining and curating all of this B-roll footage from the past however many years. And now that I'm telling you this story, I can see the parallels between American Idol, right? I was like, this is going to be my moment. The thing that catapults me to stardom and to being seen in the places that I wanted to go. Glad that Sam had made me make this video in the end, even though I was like frustrated with him I was like happy with how it turned out and I went to bed thinking like this is going to be the thing that makes everybody see that I'm worthy of being here as a content creator I woke up and the TikTok it got 30 views and I just remember feeling devastated and I wanted to run like I had run when I tried out for American Idol like I'd run from so many other things I really wanted to label myself as one of the unlucky ones. There are people who this career is destined for and there are people that it's just not. And I was so angry. I was like, if this is the case, if I am not meant to do this, why would God even put this stirring on my heart in the first place? If he was gonna be that cruel without me ever seeing the realization of that dream, I really wanted to quit and chalk it up as I'm just not meant for this. I was journaling one day and I just had the revelation that if no one is paying attention to me, then it's wheels off. I can really sit here and create from that place of what do you wanna create, Tiana? Not what what do you feel you need to create to be this person you feel you need to be. And that for me changed, not everything, but it changed a lot. And from that point forward, I just strengthened the muscle of putting myself out there, of creating the things I wanted to create because I wanted to create them, not because of the fantasy of what doing those things might afford me someday. And I think that really is the key behind this whole cliche of doing what you love. If you do what you love, all of the three dimensional things that you can taste and feel and experience as validation will come but they have to come from that place of soul purpose of wanting to do this because you want to be there not because you think it's going to afford you something down the line I am clearly getting jealous of other people I see doing this because I want to be here and that alone has to be enough that along with the goals that I had set for myself the vision that I had has to be enough every Every day, moment to moment, breath to breath is going to be different. There are going to be highs and there are going to be lows, but I have to keep putting one foot in front of the other, even if when I get to that point, right, which we know nothing is a destination, where I feel I have enough followers or enough attention or enough money, and I realize this isn't what I want and I change direction, I'll at least know that I honored this very alive, very real feeling within me to do this. And that is where I am at today. Do I still create TikToks and newsletters and YouTubes that go unseen by a large majority of people? Absolutely, yes. But I 
love sitting here doing my makeup. Am I the best at makeup? No, but I want to be here in front of you guys, talking to you guys, connecting with you guys, and doing what I so vividly feel I want to be doing. And I just got to the point where all of the other tactics just weren't working anymore. I couldn't dance around the subject no matter how much will I had. I just have to put my head down, reconcile with the discomfort that comes with trying and being so vulnerable, looking embarrassing, looking pathetic that comes along with putting yourself out there on the internet and I have to at least try. Do I still battle with insecurities and the frustration of feeling like everybody is so much further along than me every single day? Day. But you know what? The more that I do this, the more that I am learning to do things differently, the more that I am learning that I don't have to rely on being perfect or eloquent or poised or selfless or all of these things that we exalt all the time. I can just be me. And if people like it, great. If they don't, great. It's none of my business. The only thing I have control over is honoring the desires of my own heart and continuing to remind myself that I am worthy of a seat at the table. A lot of people, whether they are business owners, whether they want to be content creators, whether they want to be musicians, have this same desire and they feel so stagnant and stuck because they don't feel like they're doing it right. They have everything they need to make their dreams a reality. It's just about putting one foot in front of the other. It's just about dealing with that discomfort that arises from actually going forth and chasing your dreams. Continuing to move towards what's precious despite the ups and downs because we know that life is like that. Life isn't one thing. It is everything, everywhere, all at once. I love that movie. It's really staying with ourselves and remembering the essence of who we are despite all of those fluctuations. So I know that if you've made it this far in the video, it's because something that I am saying resonates with you. You have a desire to be seen in whatever capacity and scale that looks like and you owe it to yourself to chase that dream with tenacity, with vigor. I haven't gotten to the end of the road yet. I can't tell you that like it's all worth it and there's proof in the pudding. I'm um, using the Patrick Ta She's Giving powder now on top. These are so pigmented so I'm gonna try and do it gently but I just cannot imagine we would have these stirrings on our heart if they weren't weren't for a very specific reason and we owe it to ourselves to at least explore what that looks like. Will there be heartbreak along the way? Absolutely. Will there be disappointment and embarrassment? Absolutely, but I can guarantee there's going to be a wiser, truer version of you because you were courageous enough to venture to those edges, to push yourself in that way. Do it for the plot, you know? I'm gonna do my eyebrows now. This is the NYX Micro Brow Pencil in the shade Ash Brown. If you are on a similar journey and you're thinking about a big transition, whether it's to go for your dreams or to switch roles or to leave a situation in an environment that you know isn't good for you, I can guarantee that feeling is on your heart for a reason. I'm just using the Maybelline Sky High Mascara in probably black is black. Yep, black is black. If that is you, just know that you are not alone. I would wager that everyone feels this way at least once in their lives. And if they don't, they're lucky. They probably weren't scorned by life and by trauma. But just because you've been through hard things and just because life hasn't turned out the way that you expected it would, doesn't mean that your seat at the table is any less valuable. If anything, you deserve a seat at the table even more because of where you've been, because you haven't given up, your story is interesting because of all the places that you were daring enough to voyage. So keep going. It may not feel easy right away, but slowly but surely, if you can be present with yourself every single day, I like to do this through journaling and just through mindset work in general. If you can be present with yourself every single day and be your own best friend and advocate, it's kind of like that Ariana Grande song, Yes And. She knows if you can be your own biggest cheerleader, you can know it's not all or nothing. It's not you are this or you are that. It's riding the wave of life. Holding steadfast to the idea that your vision, your dream is there for a very specific reason. Last but not least in with the Charlotte Tilbury lip cheat. I think this is an iconic nude. Is that the color? Yeah, an iconic nude. And then on top I'm going to use my very used Dior lip oil in the shade Mahogany. I've usually been using the Summer Fridays but I don't have it near me at the moment and I don't want to get up. And then just to set everything into place I'm going to do a little bit of the Morphe Jumbo Continuous Setting spray. 
And that's really the look. If you've made it this far in the video, I want to thank you for sticking with me, for following along. I think it either means you're rooting for me or that you need a little bit of rooting yourself and know that I am rooting for you. I would always say that in my business, I'm cheering for you, but I really am. There's nothing more that I want in this life than for all of us to realize that life can be so rich, so full, so vibrant. We can have our Shark Tank moment. We can have that moment where everything clicks into place, but we have to be so steadfast in the pursuit of what feels aligned to our souls. Thank you for watching. I'm so glad we got this time together today to get ready and to talk about dreams and life. Thank you for listening to me. And until the next video, I'll see you soon.